Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. We're here with another CPU review and today we'll be looking at the Decool Ice Age Mini FS V2.0. Quite the name for a small cooler. <laughs> but overall, principally this is another tower style cooler on the budget end of Decool's market. However, this one is primarily aimed at being a low profile towers cooler. So what they're basically trying to do is they're trying to take the classic tower style cooler design and bring it as low as possible to fit into pretty much you know mini bit like smaller builds so i wouldn't so basically this you know we're going to evaluate this compared to other tower style coolers just so that you know what type of performance you're getting but do know that primarily this is the, the directed market for this cooler is if you have a build that doesn't fit the other tower style coolers so a lower build and it is quite low it's at 112 millimeters high uh, which means that it sits actually lower than pretty pretty much ever a lot of graphics cards on the market. So if your case can actually have a you know a ver a vertical graphics card in it, it'll pre it'll almost surely fit this tower cooler as well. So there are probably only a few mini ITX builds that actually will not uh, fit this cooler where the graphics cards have to be laying down. But other than that, it's actually a tower cooler that stands you know pretty short. So let's take a quick overview of the cooler while we look at the description. So it has a dual heat pipe design, so dual copper heat pipe design. Uh, this time, however, the fan that's included is an 80 millimeter fan, one that spins up to 2200 RPM. It has a three, fin, a three pin connector for the fan, so unfortunately not compatible with PWM. It's rated for up to 95 watt TDP solutions. So you know, pretty much a lot of processors except the, the high-end uh, consumer market. And if we look at the exact dimensions, like I said earlier, it stands 112 millimeters high, which is its principal selling point, 101 millimeters wide and 75 millimeters deep. So other than the height, the other dimensions are pretty standard with the basic budget small cool uh, tower coolers. Um, other than that, so, you know, when we look at the overview of the cooler, uh, build construction, pretty good. Um, once again, you know, oddly enough, the, you know, I, I focus a lot on the, 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 the contact plate, but the design on the contact plate is actually pretty tight. Uh, better than the Hyper T2 that we reviewed a few days ago. Uh, but, you know, so deep cool overall for build quality, I've got to say they, they really put together good products even on the budget end. So it's a pretty decent cooler overall. Uh, the 80 millimeter fan is, we're going to see in the performance chart, it, you know, fits well with the design, but it's 80 millimeters. You know, most other coolers in the budget end for the smaller towers are 92 millimeters. So there probably is going to be an airflow difference with this cooler compared to another one. So before we get to the conclusion and actually look at, you know, my, my specific thoughts on the cooler, let's look at the performance results. So the chart should be up for the cooling performance. So this had a 35 degrees Celsius above a uh, Delta temperature. Uh, so basically, you know, it's fitting in close to other budget coolers, but it's really overclassed by the Hyper T2 so far. Um, separate, uh, secondly, for noise-wise, however, it sits once again somewhere in the middle. At 45 decibels, it's actually quieter than the other deep cool uh, cooler that we looked at, the, uh, the 100. However, it's and, uh, you know, fairly quieter than the Hyper T2. But then again, the performance is lower. So decibel wise, pretty decent cooler. However, once again, since it's a three, fin, three pin design, my God, am I, am I gonna keep saying fin every time? Three pin design, uh, basically you're going to have to actually have a motherboard that controls the voltage temperatures to your fan. Oh, and you're probably gonna have to do a custom fan curve, use some kind of software if you want the fan to spin down. If not, it's just gonna be spinning 100% all the time, meaning that you know the 45 decibels is always gonna be there. You're not gonna have quieter moments and, and louder moments when it's, when it's under load. So that's a, you know, that's unfortunately a down point and you can see that to hit the price that Deep Cool is selling these coolers at, that's how they're doing it. They're, you know, they're, they're downgrading certain options like the fan control. 
So overall, um, it's a decent tower style cooler. Uh, however, it's not going to be one of the tower the, the coolers I'm going to personally recommend. The reason why is because if you have the space for higher coolers, um, they're at the same price point. There are a lot better options. Like the Hyper T2 is one. For like under five bucks more, you'll be able to get a Hyper T2. You'll get way better performance. You get a four pin fan. Um, however, the only thing is I don't want to completely knock this cooler because like I said, they're compromising to make the tower, the, the cooler shorter, smaller fan, uh, more compact, you know, heat sink design basically. Meaning that I wasn't expecting it to beat other coolers of the same price. But I can't recommend it because there are better price for performance options out there. However, if your build specifically cannot fit those other tower style coolers and the 112 millimeter design fits in your build and there aren't other options, it's not a bad buy for that reason, but for that reason specifically. Because if you have the so if you have the room and the space for bigger coolers, and even I have one or two other, you know, right now I'm, I'm focusing a lot on the Hyper T2 because in our charts, that's the one price for money right now that is giving the best overall performance. Uh, but we're gonna be looking at other designs soon. There are better options out there. So a okay cooler, not a recommended for the price for performance, but recommended if you have a small bill that will not fit other tower style coolers. However, you know, if you're on a Ryzen 7, i7, forget this cooler. It's not going to give you enough performance. Anyway, the 95 watt TDP, once you start overclocking, you're well above that on those CPUs. I mean, you're above that on some of it on the base uh, TDP. So, you know, forget it for those. But if you're running a Ryzen 3, if you're running a Ryzen f low end Ryzen 5, an i5 or lower, it can be a solution for you if you want some basic overclocking functions, help you a little bit with cooling, and your build will not fit any other models because of the, uh, you know, the space restraints in your construction. So as usual, I'll leave the Amazon affiliate links down below because this is new to the channel. But, you know, if you are planning on buying this cooler, if it's something now that you want to purchase, uh, use the links down below. It helps the channel out, helps me get more reviews out there for you because right now I'm reinvesting everything in the channel. Um, as usual, any comments, any questions, leave them in the, the, in the um, comments down below. I'll do my best to answer everyone as quickly as possible. If I don't know the answer, I'll try and let you know that I don't know the answer. Um, other than that, as usual, uh, you know, likes and follows and uh, subscriptions help a lot. So as usual, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next review.